The Nerf Gear was released to consumers in May of 2022 in Sword Art Online's main chronology. As we're nearing the end of May of 2022 in real life, and eight years since my first Nerf Gear both near and far video, it seems fitting to see where we're at with regards to making a device like the Nerf Gear today, and whether or not we're more near or far to making that dream a reality. Welcome virtual dreamers, my name is Gregory, and let's full dive into that question right now. The functionality of the Nerf Gear is threefold. It immerses the senses into VR, runs games that are being played, and allows the player to move in the virtual world without moving their bodies in real life. Let's walk through each one of these elements to see where we stand on the whole making it real front. Starting with sensory immersion, the most sophisticated setups that we have today make use of head-mounted displays, spatialized headphone audio, sophisticated suits filled with haptic stimulators, and even smell dispensers for immersion. Gaming-wise, the most sophisticated games today are capable of emulating reality with ray-traced lighting, blurring the lines between real life and games unlike never before. And in terms of controls, full body tracking has been available in the consumer space for just about years now. Whether you opt to use a Kinect style camera setup, dedicated trackers attached to your body, full on VR suits, or throw on an EEG so you can straight up control games with your mind. We're well into the era of VR today compared to having just developer kits out like we did back in 2014 when I made my first video on this topic. So we're unquestionably closer now to the Nerve Gear experience versus how close we were back then. I think it's something worth celebrating, but I'm not blind to reality either. No matter how much we've improved, the blunt truth is that there are no Nerve Gears on store shelves right now. And for many of you out there, nothing short of a perfect full dive experience with a Nerve Gear headset is acceptable. Head mounted displays, nothing but screens on our faces. They're not real VR. We should be using electromagnetic waves to interact with our brains, to have all five senses, not strapping on stupid suits. Heck, why are even bothering with VR suits, full body tracking, and treadmills for movement either? We can't accept an immersive experience that actually requires us to move in real life. We should just paralyze our bodies, use lucid dreams for immersion, and EEG to read our minds and have full dive that way. We have the instructions right in the goddamn anime. How incompetent can scientists be? How can Elon Musk be so blind to that option? And he'd opt to make Neuralinker from Axor World down to ripping off the name. Until real life gives me a nerve gear, I don't want anything. If that little spiel resonated with you, here are your answers. The reason we aren't just doing what they described in the Sword Art Online anime is that in real life, physics don't work the way they do in a book. Why are we using head-mounted displays, VR suits, and smell dispensers instead of brain stimulation for immersion? Because forget close or far, in the realm of externally interacting with our brains for sensory immersion, we haven't even started. Transcranial magnetic stimulation and transcranial electrical stimulation are our primary methods of interacting with the brain without surgery, and neither has done anything remotely close to so much as rendering a pixel in our visions, let alone making a game work. The electromagnetic wave-based approach for stimulating neural activity? All we've got on that end is optogenetics, which currently requires genetic modification to work. Unless we develop a process to recreate your brain to be capable of light interaction, the Sword Art Online method of immersing our senses is outright impossible with our current understanding of physics. It's not much better on the VR control side of things either, seeing as our best method of reading our brain activity in the consumer sector, EEG, sucks and hasn't improved in over 10 years. When one of the leaders of VR technology development, Michael Abrash, basically thinks the best we'll get from the technology, if we're lucky, is a neural click, which basically amounts to an extra mouse button, and guys like Elon Musk and Gabe Newell have just skipped over that technology to go over the invasive solution of drilling into your brain instead, it should say a lot about how little potential 
is being seen in the progression for the technology of EEG. Sad to say, but me of eight years ago turned out to be completely wrong about EEG technology. And again, even if it was perfect, we currently lack a technology to induce paralysis electronically. As for the why don't we just use lucid dreams crowd, the same we don't have a way of controlling the brain externally problem facing, you know, immersion and controls is still here. Unless you're trying to deal with hypnosis or drugs to do something. But then again, isn't that just going away from the nerve here entirely at this point? Everyone, almost every single time I make a video on the topic of VR, there will be people in the comments saying things along the lines of, I'm going to wait for real VR, or I'm holding out for the nerve here. Well, I can only applaud their faith because waiting for something whose development basically has no evidence to be possible by our current understanding of science really takes like a religious degree of faith, to be honest. So can't help but be impressed. Now then, for the rest of you who are left here who aren't in that aforementioned category, I think it's worth our while to look at where the developments of technology that are being made need to go in order to improve things with regards to immersive technology on the whole. After all, if our current understanding of physics doesn't allow science to create a nerve gear technology, then the obvious course of action is to just get a better understanding of physics. While head mounted displays, haptic suits, and smell dispensers don't work the same way as the nerve gear, the fact that they're effective isn't in question and studying why they're effective can provide us with some insight into how our brain's reality perception pipeline works. I didn't mention the graphical argument in that little downer section that we had before because thankfully that's an area that doesn't have to be a downer. VR technology can make PS2 graphics feel immersive. At this point, PC graphical technology, ray tracing or not, is beyond what we need to create a game that looks like sort of online. It's also worth noting that while EEG is basically a lost cause for immersion, there are alternatives being worked on that can still improve our control experience with VR and better allow us to understand our brain's motor pipeline, such as Open Water's optical light-based approach, and of course, EEG's muscle-based cousin, EMG, which I've already called the future of VR controls. And with regards to Neuralink and similar intracranial technologies, there is literally no downside with regards to their benefits as they can be by far our best way to understand how the brain works in real time. It's important to understand that science is a process, not a set of laws. Credible scientists thought atomic bombs were impossible technology early in the 20th century, but then we discovered the existence of the neutron and what was possible changed along with that discovery. While I wouldn't make a habit of betting on miracles or curses, depending on your perspective, like that to happen, it doesn't change the reality that our current scientific theories are still incomplete and that we have no idea what possibilities lay on the other side of future discoveries. The only way that we'll live to see the answers through though, will be if we continue to push forward progress, research, development, and science. As such, rather than spending time shitting on today's VR technology for not being the nerve gear, how about we all instead be glad it's given us another avenue for justifying the pursuit of immersive technology. I want to see more of you in school pursuing science, more people making VR games, more people buying VR peripherals, and hopefully more people actually fighting for their virtual dreams rather than just reveling in them. Because Nerve Gear technology isn't here, and it hasn't even been started, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep hoping and trying to make it happen. I hope that answer's good enough for you now, my fellow virtual dreamers. Till next time, this has been Gregory, logging out.